Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Just like a lot of you guys, I'm very curious of where AI design is going. There are five to six very cool points that I've researched and I also have a lot of tools that I'm gonna share during this video so that you also get resources along with this video. The first biggest prediction for the future are intuitive background AI tools. And what do I mean by this? So if you go to a platform like Freepik, Freepik has recently introduced AI into their tool, but they're not bombarding their current users with it. Anytime you open up an image, you see some really cool actions you can take with the power of AI. Right there and then, you can remove the background of the image you're looking at. You can change the style of it. You can go from a realistic photo to a cartoon. You can even expand the image. A lot of the stuff that things like Adobe is pursuing, they're doing right there with their image gallery. This doesn't take you to any other page. It doesn't ask you to pay up for anything. And you can instantly download the result from there without having to do a bunch of tasks or to fill a bunch of forms. I believe this is the perfect future for where AI should be. Working in the background with tools that we often use on a daily basis. Solving real problems, this is definitely a thumbs up and I'm really, really excited for such a future. The next solution is the need of the art. Non-creative versus creative communication solved and made easy using AI. So if I am a creative talking to a client who isn't a creative person or who isn't a designer, talking to them will be so much easier because they will be able to explain their designs faster and better. And we as designers will be able to produce better results faster. Now there are some tools like Otter which convert your conversations on Google Meet, etc. into relevant notes, moments of meetings, as well as some stuff that you can use in your future projects based on what the client is saying. However, this solution would be a level ahead of that, where while you're talking to the client, the client can quickly brief you on your designs and that brief gets quickly converted into something which you can use as a designer faster and better, where language, understanding of design and so much more does not matter while you are speaking to the client. The client is perfectly able to explain everything that they require from you as a designer. Third one is solutions based on AI vision. Now AI has become smart enough to be able to match what it is seeing with elements that it already recognizes. A very good example of this are AI tools or plugins inside Figma. Some of them are able to recognize whether a button is a button, whether a rectangle is an input box, or whether something is a title or a paragraph text. Now this visual recognition is being built into tools like ChatGPT, etc. already. This would mean so many repetitive design tasks like creating long prototypes much, much easier, where all you have to do is just let the AI scan your designs and based on these scans, it can tell you where you're going wrong, where you can improve, how you can animate certain elements, bring delight into your designs, and even create automatic prototypes for you. I think this is one of the coolest implementations of AI's vision capabilities. Similarly, tools like Wizard or UIZerd take AI vision to the next level where they can scan wireframes on a piece of paper and convert that into a digital design. They can even convert a theme or a brand asset and applies all those brand assets to your current design. So if you have have green as your primary color, it'll apply green to all the primary buttons that you have on screen. That is a actual good implementation of AI where they're not taking our jobs essentially, but making our jobs easier, faster, better. Okay, this next one, I am so excited for. They have failed me again and again. So there is a tool called Genius that was being created by, by now head of AI at Figma, where virtually a companion, an AI companion would follow along in your designs as if there was a teammate working with you. And anytime you were creating a design that need to be repeated, that need to be uh, tweaked or edited or fixed, it would come in, give you advice and even fix things or improve things for you. If somebody saw that little cursor moving around, they would not be able to make out that that's not a human being because it was visually so convincing. Now that is an actual useful representation of AI where you as a creative are guiding the AI on what to do. You are making the decisions first and that AI is just either fixing it, improving on it or doing the repetitive tasks for you. I am so excited for something like this to come to either Figma or any other tool. Virtual companions get a huge thumbs up from me, man. I'm looking forward to it. Okay, so the next one is coming from the recent 
advancement in AI tech. Companies like Nvidia, Google, Apple, everyone's investing in offline capabilities for artificial intelligence. So right now, if you see the Pixel 9 has been launched, iOS 18 with Apple's own AI, and even Samsung coming up with their AI. And now this is the era of offline AI. Right now, a majority of AI tools that you use are working on the cloud, leading to slower artificial intelligence, where everything just is slow and tardy. So next time you're looking for, say, a new MacBook or a new computer, a new phone, you will be looking for these creative tools there as well. These creative tools coming as offline would be a huge help for you to actually invest a little more in those devices. Right now, they seem very gimmicky. Right now, they seem as if, okay, this could be done on an older phone. Why not just do it on an older phone? Okay, so the next talking point is definitely niche areas being targeted by AI. However, we see very few niche tools with AI capabilities that are actually useful. For example, Maze is one of the tools that has recently included AI features where designers build questionnaires for UX research purposes. They will be able to utilize AI's knowledge of research candidates, concepts, the ideas, and the data that has been collected by tools like Maze and can be used for your project now. Years of data of a niche solution or a niche problem is being used to facilitate the things of the future, the, the helpful nature of this AI. I think that is where the beauty of AI then stands. We as designers face a lot of these niche problems on a daily basis. So this would just fit right into our purposes and needs. All right, guys, that is my perspective on the future of AI. If you like such content, this one-on-one -on -one talk that I can have with you guys, give this video a huge thumbs up. That is all I require. Tell me in the comments what you think, where AI is going for you as a designer, as a creative, and I will post such content every week. So be here, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time. Take care. God bless.